This video is presented to you by American Football Monthly, the number one magazine for the football industry. Subscribe to American Football Monthly today and you'll receive exclusive coaching information from the game's greatest coaches and programs. Learn how successful coaches have built championship programs as they share their wisdom in exclusive articles. Discover a wealth of strategy and detail in our offensive, defensive, and special teams articles. Subscribe today and you'll receive unlimited access to AmericanFootballMonthly.com, the Internet's largest collection of football coaching articles. To subscribe, log on to www.AmericanFootballMonthly.com or call 1-800-537-4271. Hello, I'm Coach John Booty, and I want to welcome you to Calvary Academy in Shreveport, Louisiana. Over the years, I've had many families and coaches and friends ask me the question, how did you do it? How did you have so many great quarterbacks? Over the years, I've had 11 straight all-state quarterbacks, and during that time, they have thrown for over 50,000 yards and 550 touchdowns. I've coached two USA Today National Players of the Year at the quarterback position, and many have felt we would have had the third had John David Booty uh, chose to stay in high school one more year. He was a prime candidate for that award. And I would like to introduce to you the quarterbacks that we're working with today. First of all, this is Jake Booty, my son. Yeah, I have another one. He's my fourth and my third quarterback. And I'm really proud of him. He's, he will be in the eighth grade. This way, you coaches that are actually wanting to know how you build a great quarterback, how you grow a great quarterback, you can see we start at this level. The eighth grade level is when you should begin really tutoring them and mentoring them, training them. Also, we have Alan Rogers. Alan, if you'll come over here on this side of me. Alan is in the 10th grade, and uh, Alan is a, a young man that I've worked with for uh, a, about a year, and you're going to see that there is a real difference in how they can respond to these drills, but that's what we want you to see. We want you to see it takes a long time to grow a great quarterback. Before we even get on the field, the first thing I teach quarterbacks is about values. It's a very important subject, and that's the reason why we get to it right off the bat. Everyone should have a set of values. Every leader should have an inner compass that gives them direction. Even the President of the United States, our Commander-in-Chief, has a set of values. I read a book the other day. It says that he believes that he leads from a place where God is first, family, and honesty in, those, in that order. And he directs his whole country from that simple list of values. A quarterback is called a field general. And certainly if he's going to lead a team, he needs a set of values as well. He is the leader of the team. And let me give you what I teach each of my quarterbacks. Number one, that the decisions you make impact the people around you be it on or off the field. Every day, unfortunately, we're reading about another great athlete that has bit the dust and can't play because of a decision that he has made that's impacted the institution, the program, and his teammates. Be it a drug issue, be it a theft issue, be it a grade issue, etc. When you make a decision, it impacts us all. And I tell that quarterback, it's the same way if they throw a, a pick when they shouldn't have, when they made the bad read. They make a bad decision, it affects all of us. And that's got to work through all of life. 
It's got to be something that that quarterback takes to heart. It can't just be a lesson that I'm teaching. It's got to become life. When you walk out on that field or you walk off that field, every decision you make when I'm your quarterback coach is going to have tremendous repercussions. That's why we work so hard. We want you to be good. But if you're good on the football field and make bad decisions off the football field, you've just impact, impacted all of us in a very negative way. Secondly, you've got to believe in yourself. And I can't underscore this enough, especially at, as a quarterback. We want you to believe in yourself. We want you to believe that you can get the job done. And that's why I stress that. We work hard to help these young men believe that they're the best. Uh, from the very first day, I tell them that they're going to be the best in the country. I think that may be the reason why I've had two within a decade who are considered the very best in America with a potential third candidate. It's because I really believe in that. I stress that. If you're going to quarterback for me, I want you to believe that you're the very best in the whole country. Number three, honesty. You've got to learn to tell the truth. When you're out on the field and you make a mistake, don't come back to the sideline blaming somebody else. Learn to take the raps for your mistake. Speak honestly and openly to your teammates. Uh, I think this is a very, very important character trait is to be honest, to speak the truth always. Fourthly, treat others the same way that you want to be treated. I know that comes right out of the Bible, but you can't beat it. It's important that we treat everybody. I've seen so many uh, quarterbacks that, that uh, have uh, uh, made certain achievements uh, on the football field, and when I meet them, I, I, I sort of wince because I, I, I see the way they treat people. They don't treat people with the respect that people deserve. All people, I don't care if they're a manager, I don't care if they're uh, a student in your classroom. It's so important that you learn to treat everybody well. I think that's an important trait. You're leading the institution. You're leading the field. Everyone needs to know that you treat them with respect. Nextly is develop a go-for-it attitude. Now, this is important, quarterbacks, because in the spread offense, you've got to make a decision in split, a split second. I don't you don't want to be timid. I want you to believe you can get it done. So I want you to go for it. Quarterbacks, I want you to know that when I work with our quarterbacks in a game situation, I never gripe at them or ball them out during a game. I never try to embarrass them because I want to instill this attitude that they went for it, it's okay, I taught them to go for it. If they make a mistake, hey, I'll work on that during the week. During the game, I never embarrass them. During the week, I coach them up. It's a big difference. It's important that we get that right. Uh, value coaching is becoming popular once again. Just yesterday, I read this article in the Shreveport Times about Bill Parcells in which he says uh, that uh, he was dealing with a certain player that he put on waivers. And he says, I don't want any of my players hanging out at the nightclubs. Quote, the nightclubs aren't a good place to be. Now, this is not coming from a Bible teacher. This is coming from Bill Parcells, one of the most accomplished coaches in, on this planet. He goes on to say, I've told them that since I got here. No, that's not why I wavered him, but I am interested in having pretty good citizens here. We've had a couple of incidents here already this spring, and I'm doing my best to try to get things the way we need to have them. Coach Par uh, Parcell learned a long time ago, if you learn to instill values in your team, you're going to get that team where you want to have them. They're going to be champions if they learn to reflect great values. I talk to our quarterbacks about being a great student. It's very, very important. This is what I tell them. Do the program. In the eighth grade, when we start working with these young quarterbacks, I tell them, do everything that your institution is asking of you. Every subject brings something to your personality and leadership. I know that might not be something that thrills you quarterbacks, but I'm telling you, whether it's geometry or history, you can learn something in that class that will bring something to the table that will help you be a better athlete. I really love to have quarterbacks that make A's and B's. That's where I want my quarterbacks. You say that's asking a lot and to, be, and to do the things on the field that they're asked for. Not so. Every one of our quarterbacks have been great students. I demand it. I expect all of them to honor their teachers and I expect them to honor that institution that's helping them become the athlete that they want to be.
We always will start with the feet. And a lot of people think that ironic because they're wanting to come in here and us talk about that big time arm. Well, I'm just believing in a few years, if you work with me, I'll have that arm ready to go and it will be big time. But we always start with the feet. We feel like that's where it all begins and that's where we will begin today. The way we start with our quarterbacks, of course, is start working with the feet. And a big part of the spread offense is being able to get the ball and get it out to a receiver, left or right, as quickly as possible. To do that, we start working every day right off the bat with our one-step drop. And this is what it'll look like. Alan, if you'll just take the ball and you'll separate to one, just a one-step on our line, staying on the line with your first step, right there. Let's try it again. Right there. One more time. Right there. Now, off of this first move, we're going to imagine a receiver, a wide receiver, out to our right, and we're going to go through our, what we call our now or pop steps. When we call a now in the huddle, to our right or to the left, that means the quarterback is going to get the ball out of the center, away from the center, he's going to separate, and within one step, he's going to get the ball to the right or the left. Let's see what it would look like, Alan. There, there. Okay, one more time. Now let's get, now you can fire out and get your separation. We want to have good separation. Okay, now let's stop the pop, okay? Because I don't want to develop that habit of before you throw of popping the ball. Let's just come right out from center, one step, and then throw to your right, and then the next time we'll come out and we'll throw to the left, okay? There, boom. Okay, now let's go ahead and follow through. Act just like you're throwing the ball. There, boom. Very, very good. All right, now let's go to the one step. And then let's go to the left, like we're throwing the, uh, the uh, now or the pop to the left. Okay, now let's stay right off. There you go. Very good. Straight on back and making the throw. Boom, boom. Okay, very good. Jake, if you'll come in now. Set, hut. One step. Very good. Very good. Do it again. Set, hut. Very good. All right, now let's don't get the feet too wide right now, okay? Now, let's, let's uh, pop to the left. Let's throw the pop to the left. That's the way to look. Okay, one more time. Very good. Very good. Now, now what we want to do is throw the ball, actually let them throw the ball off uh, of the one-step drop. Now, we're working on the separation. We have to get out from the center as quickly as possible because in the spread offense, we've got to get that ball out to the right or left as quickly as possible because if we catch them in a soft defense, that means they're playing off of our receivers. We're going to burn them with a simple signal, a movement of any kind. We can signal that we're going to now to the wide receiver. To, but I want that quarterback to get that ball out of his hand right now. It's got to come right now as quickly as possible. So we're going to show you how we work on this one, pic, one particular part of our scheme. Okay, now I want you, I don't want, when you're coming out from under center, quarterbacks, I don't want your eyes to be here, like Alan was just now. I don't want the eyes, that's not going to help us. I always want our eyes to be here, always watching. You're going to look at a safety, you may be looking at a, a, a linebacker, you may be looking away from a cornerback, but I want your eyes out front of you, comfortable position, and I want you coming back, head up, Never eyes down. A lot of young quarterbacks do that, and we have to work a, a long time to get that out of their drop. You never drop your eyes. Let's try it again, Alan. Right, very good. Another throw. Very good. Okay. All right, Jake, now let's try it right here. Now we're going to come with Jake. And he's going to work on getting the ball out from his hand as quickly as possible, but with good separation. Very good. Now you're looking too tall. You've got to fire out and you don't want to push the ball. Now you want to, you want to throw the football. You don't want to push it. And this one, I'm working with young quarterbacks. I, I, I always want to remind myself arm is not that important. But occasionally when I, when I see them begin to try to push the ball out of target, I try to correct that as soon as possible. I'm wanting these quarterbacks to throw the football. Very good, very good. Now, 
we're going to go to our three-step drop. Everybody in the country does it. We work a lot at it. We probably work more on the three-step drop than we do any other drop because we work out of the shotgun a lot as well, which is exclusively the three-step drop. Alan, if you'll come in and let's begin to show the, the uh, coaches and quarterbacks how we do it. One, two, three. Very good. Very good. The key, the key part of what we teach our quarterbacks is your separation. We want them to get back as deep as they can, as quick as they can, in a three-step drop. Now, if you notice, on the end of our drop, we're not resetting. Now, this is a reset. Excuse me, Alan, for just a moment. On a three-step drop, we're coming here and we're anchoring, and we're throwing off the anchor foot. We're not resetting to throw. A lot of young quarterbacks want to reset on a three-step drop. We don't teach it that way. We want the quarterback to get back and to get the ball out as quickly as possible. That's why it should look like this, here or here. Let's, let's watch Allen do it again. All right, very good. Very good. Now, Allen, let's throw the ball now off the three-step drop, and as soon as you anchor, let's get rid of the football to the net. Okay, again, don't drop your eyes and don't go small. When we want to teach our quarterbacks, when they're dropping back, we want to grow them tall, not grow them small. And by that, I mean we'll see a lot of quarterbacks start to hunker down in here and get down here uh, short. I want them to grow tall. I want these quarterbacks to be up here in a big, strong, tall position. I don't want them to go in, in here with, with their drop. Let's try one more time. Keep your eyes downfield, anchor and throw. Very good, very good. Okay, Jake, if you'll come in and let's, let's uh, show the coaches how we'll do it. Now, even though we're dropping down in size, we feel like the, our eighth grade quarterbacks have to be able to perfect the three-step drop. Down, sit, huh? Very good. Down, sit, huh? Very good. Let's try it again. Down, sit, huh? All right, let's get one more throw with it, Jake. Now, quarterbacks, let's remember when you're working on your drop, separation is, is very important. Uh, I don't want you to work on this a few times, and you're stumbling through, and you're shuffling through, and you're not getting any separation. A lot of quarterbacks, see, I've seen a lot of great quarterbacks in pregame, and they'll, they'll loosen up like this, and they'll throw, and boy, they've got that wonderful big-time arm. But when they get in the game, because they're used to going like this, this is what they do, and they never get a pass off. We've got uh, linebackers with their helmets uh, stuck in their numbers. You've got to separate. That's why you've got to move away from center as quickly as possible. That's why you've got to make sure that if you work on it all day, by the end of the day, you should have your three-step drop at about three and a half yards deep, three yards to three and a half yards deep. We must make sure we get that distance. Let's try it one more time, uh, Alan. Three-step drop before we go to the five. One more time, throw in the ball. Okay, very good, very good. All right, now we're going to work on our uh, five-step drop, and this is with a reset. Again, quarterbacks, our reset is when we come back to that anchor position and then we shuffle up to get that extra, we're throwing the ball a little deeper now, and we need that extra momentum to get that ball off. Alan, let's, let's show uh, our quarterbacks how we do a five-step drop. Very good, all right, very good. One more time. All right, very good, one more time. One more time, Alan. Very good. Okay, Jake, let's try it here. Down, sir. All right, try it again. Keep the ball up, all up high. Don't drop the ball. Down, sir. Okay, let's try it one more time. Now let's get a good five-step drop. Down, sir. Very good. Okay, now we're going to throw the ball off the five-step drop and reset. We'll have him throw it into our net. Alan? Very good. Okay, one more time. Up. 
Okay, Jake, let's try it, try it with the throw off the reset. All right, another throw. All right, now one thing that I, I throw this in with our quarterbacks, even though we're working on feet, I like them to have an authoritative voice. Uh, if you're going to be a field general, you can have that, that little, what we call milk toast voice. We've got to get up there and we've got to be strong with our voice. Say, hut! You've got to practice that just like you practice everything else. The last two years, we played our state championship game in front of over 40,000 people. And if you don't practice your voice, you're not going to have one when you're trying to give that cadence in, 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 into a stadium like the Superdome. You've got to be loud. You've got to, you've got to take charge. So quarterbacks, I want you to come back one more time. I want to go with a, uh, a five-step drop with a reset, and I want you to give me a little voice with this. It's important that we get that voice right. Yeah. Now, if you noticed on that drop, he dropped his eyes again, and that's something we just can't do. So by, uh, by the time he's a junior or senior, we've got to have all that out of his drop. He cannot drop his eyes because there's no defensive players on the ground. All the defensive players are in front of you. You've got to keep your head up. Never drop your head. Let's try it again, Alan. Down. Sit up. Very good. All right, Jake, let's try it again. Down. Sit up. All right. Down. Sit up. Very accurate. Very good throw. Now, you can't do that enough, quarterbacks. We would work on this during the summer, hour to a day. That's what it requires. You cannot let down this. I have a, a, an older son that plays for the Cleveland Browns. He's still working on his drops. He's still never satisfied with his quickness and his separations. It's something you'll work on to the very last day you play this position. Now, we're in the shotgun a lot, just like many of you guys are. And uh, there are two ways that we look at our drops. When we first began running the spread offense, we tried to get our quarterback as deep as we can uh, on, every, on every shotgun play. Now we're watching how wide our defensive end's rush against us is. If it's really wide, we'll shallow up our drop. You can see why, because it's an easier uh, line of approach if we're too deep. But we always start teaching our young quarterbacks the three-step drop off the shotgun and we do it exactly like we do the three-step drop from the center. And then we can adjust that as they get older and our opponents are widening their ends. We can adjust that so that they're not really quite sure their approach to the quarterback. Very good. Three-step drop. Very good. One more time. Very good. Okay, Jake, let's try it uh, now with a three-step drop out of the shotgun. Okay. Now, as you, uh, Jake, when he was dropping, he was flipping the football. A lot of quarterbacks do that. You might be doing that right now, and you coaches have seen that, I'm sure, over the years. I don't like that. What I've discovered is I know I've thrown the football enough to know that one side of that football can feel sometimes a lot better than the other. But the data, data doesn't prove that out, that one side, one side makes a difference in the throw. It's just we feel it that way. I promise you, you can throw both sides of that football equally well, even though it may not feel quite as comfortable to you. Stop flipping the football when you're dropping. I know that the uh, college uh, people, they don't like that either, and I sure don't. I don't want this to happen when you're dropping a lot. I want you to get that ball. I want you to go on back, shoulder level, get your three-step drop. Okay. Try again. Very good. Very good. We want quarterbacks that are very light-footed. And you're saying, you mean you want them to weigh 140 pounds? No. We want those big boys just like you do. But we want them to be light. 
We want them to be like Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali. You've seen that tape where he's bouncing and he's weaving and he's, he's floating like a butterfly and he's stinging like a bee. I feel like that's some of the best video you could ever get to teach your quarterbacks. I've, with all my boys, I've showed them a little bit of those tapes because I want them to be light-footed. I don't want them to be heavy with their feet. And to get that, we we've, we've, uh, have a drill that we work on, lightening, what I call lightening up their feet. Let's watch. Hip! 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 Orange! Now, what we're after is him not necessarily hitting every one of my commands, although the great ones can do it. The most important thing, remember, is lightening them up. Hip! 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 Back! Green! Very good, Alan. Jake, let's try it. Orange. Very good. Hip. 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 Orange. All right. Alan, back in. Hip. 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 White. Now, as we're working on this drill, not only do I begin to work on lightening them up, but also, as you can see, I begin to make them use these, this head of theirs. They've got to focus and train just like in a game. Remember, if all summer, all your, all you quarterbacks, if, if all you do is just sort of give it this little shot and throw those routes, by the time you get into the game, you're not going to be able to execute. You have to be able to move your feet. This drill simulates a real game condition. Hip! 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 Red! All right, Jake. White. All right. We almost lost that before we did lose that football. Now, that's good because I've had quarterbacks that come in that are highly rated quarterbacks all over America. Put them in this drill, and they might even miss the whole net. The reason is, is because they're not used to moving, and that's exactly what you're going to have to do in game conditions. Now we're going to work on the board drill. We want the same results. We want to lighten you up. We want good, quick feet. And I'm going to give you commands and make you think all at the same time, trying to get you right into a pocket in game conditions. Three-step drop. Hip, 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 back, green. All right, Jake. Hip, 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 orange. Now, that time you saw he, he missed a command. Remember, he's in the 8th grade. By the time he's a senior, he'll be doing this beautifully, as good as anybody in the whole country. But right now, he's a little young. It's di very difficult to him to make the commands with his feet, to think with his head, to throw with his arm. That's why we do this, and we'll do it with a kid that young every day. Hip, hip, green. All right, you ready? Hip, hip. White. Got to get your feet set. Now, remember, uh, quarterbacks, when you're working on this, the most important thing is uh, getting your feet in a position to throw. That last uh, drill, you could see his feet were totally out of position, and he couldn't make a good throw consequently. So even if, even if you're working on these commands and you're not quite sure when uh, your coach is giving you that command, Still, get your feet to throw. Even if it takes you a little longer to do it, get your feet underneath you. That's what this is all about. Hip, 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 over, red. Okay, Jake. Okay. Hip, hip, orange. Okay, Alan. Here, here. Step over, yellow. You can see how this works, that quarterback. It gets his feet lightened up. It makes him to have a, a pocket presence. He begins to think, uh, and you'll see it where you see our quarterback, eyes downfield, stepping over a body, up under people, around people, and making the touchdown throw. Remember, each one of those drills, I'm hoping I can get you two extra touchdowns a season. Now we're going to work on the zigzag. We do it, we're going to lighten them up again. We're going to really push them back five yards, back, 
over five, back five, over five, and back. Remembering, uh, quarterbacks, we've got to lighten you up, we've got to quicken you up, and we've got to make your movement second nature, just like in a game situation. Very, very good, very good. Jake, come on. Very good. Now, quarterbacks, uh, you noticed uh, on his, when he started to drop the first time, he dropped the ball a bit. We don't want that. We want to keep the ball a shoulder level. We call that loading. We want to load it properly. Keep that ball loaded on that shoulder. Alan, let's try it again. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, Jake, let's, let's knock it out. Let's nail it. Don't slap that ball. And Jake, I want you loud. Pick that voice up. <laughs> we caught him. And now that's great. Uh, quarterbacks, I, I, you know, you want it to be perfect, but it's good when you see something like that because that happened a lot with Joshua, uh, with Josh Booty, with Brock Berlin. Uh, they trip themselves a lot too. It takes a lot of hard work. But if you do this every day, you'll be surprised what kind of art you can create on a football field. Now we're going to work on a drill whereby the quarterback's going to get his reset. We're going to pretend a big defensive end just got to the pocket before they did. So that they crashed the pocket down. We're going to want the quarterback to run right at the center and throw on the run on my command. Now. Jake, be ready to go. You. Down, son. Here. Don't stop now. I don't want the quarterback to stop running. I want him to throw the football on the run. Here. Okay. Down, son. Now, quarterbacks, we're going to do something that everybody in America does. We're going to work on the rollout. The rollout's a big part of our game in the past as well. We've had some quarterbacks that could throw better than others on the run, but I promise you this, anybody can get better with practice. Now, with our rollout, we're going to do the things that almost every school in America will do when you come out from under center. What you always want to do is open up on a 45-degree angle and you want to get at least four yards depth as you're coming out on your rollout. If you shallow it up too much, you're going to run right into a big defensive end that would like a little bit of you. We don't want that. We want to get you some depth. So 45 degree angle always. You can see my foot. And I'm going to get at least four yards as I move with my head toward the defense. Uh, the camps that I've worked, I've noticed this from young quarterbacks. All young quarterbacks want to do their head and look this way. This couldn't be more wrong. Quarterbacks, you cannot look this way. There is no safeties back there, no linebackers whatsoever back there. They're out there, and that's what you've got to see. You especially want to see if you have a glass and defensive end or not. That's what you want to be able to see so you can make your adjustment to get around contained. So we teach it, open up 45 degree angle, get at least four yards depth. Now, as you, as you gain ground and you've executed this perfectly and you're coming back to the line of scrimmage, you want your shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage as you throw. Most high school quarterbacks like to throw across their body when they're running. They, it would look something like this, which you can, is, is a totally inappropriate way to to throw a rollout, you've got to come and square up to you're actually square to the line of scrimmage to make your throw, to make the good strong throw. That's difficult and that's why you probably need to work on this drill more than all the others. Head downfield on defensive yeah. end. Very good. Very good. Very good. Jake, 45 degree now. Down, yeah. Very good. 
45 degrees. Yeah. Get on out of there. Now you can see, you can see the quarterbacks uh, from time to time are struggling. There are a lot of component steps in the rollout. That's why you have to do it a lot to get your timing properly. Remember this, most young quarterbacks don't load up until it's too late. Almost 90% of the quarterbacks in America that I see roll out at high school level, they don't load up. When I mean load up is get ready to throw until the receiver is well out of his break. I don't want that. I want you to be loaded up as soon as you come out of your retreat, your four step, uh, your, your four yard depth, I want the ball to be loaded on your shoulder. I want you to have the ball ready to throw before that receiver uh, comes out of his uh, break. All right, Jake, let's do it. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Okay, Jake, jump in here. Yeah, sir. There you go. Yeah. Now, quarterbacks, as you're watching these, you can see sometimes they're a little too shallow. Sometimes they're dropping the football. Sometimes they're not loading up properly. But remember this. Whether you're watching an all-pro or you're watching a typical high school quarterback, you can learn something from watching them. The more you can get your cell phone video, the more you can watch this video and compare it to some of the highlight video that we have, you can begin to see that there's a rhyme and reason in doing it right. Remember, load the ball up, though. I want you to have the ball in the position to throw before that receiver makes his break. That's a very important point. Now we're going to roll from the other side. As all you quarterbacks know, when you're rolling left and throwing, that's the hardest throw in football. And we work on this a lot. Uh, I, I really believe that any time you struggle on something, you really work especially on that drill. So we spend a lot of time rolling left. We're going to watch Alan and Jake as they try to work through their steps, get the ball loaded, get parallel to the line of scrimmage, and make the throw. Very good. Very good throw, son. Very good throw. That's a keeper there. That'll work. Okay, not bad, not bad. Very good. Yeah. No, that was, a, that was a very good throw, quarterbacks, but as you can see, he's a little younger. He's having, try, uh, he's having a tough time getting his depth. He needs to get at least four yards depth at a 45 degree angle. Real important that he gets that. Very good. All right, very good. When I was about Jake's age, about the eighth grade, I worked out with uh, Terry Bradshaw and Joe Ferguson, and you can imagine that was pretty embarrassing to try to throw with these, these uh, future NFL greats. Terry especially had one of the greatest arms I've, I've ever seen. One day I walked up to him, and I said, Terry, how did you learn to throw so hard and have such a strong arm? And without blinking, he turned and looked at me and he says, Johnny, I throw a lot. And I still believe that today. If you aspire to having a great arm, nothing will take the place of throwing a lot. The weight room is going to help you a great deal. And in a moment, I'll show you some things that we work on with the weights. But nothing is going to help you as much as throwing the ball. Why? Because that ball, after you throw it a certain amount of times, that ball will become second nature. It'll become part of you. It'll stop what I call fighting you. Some of you throwing the ball right now and it's knuckling a lot on you and it's not spiraling. Let me tell you how to solve that. Throw a lot. You'll learn to throw that ball. You'll, it'll become second nature, part of your body. It'll begin to spiral as you learn good mechanics. The more you throw, the stronger your arm will get. A lot of baseball players uh, I know is even at the major league level, they even warm up throwing the football because that football throw strengthens your arm. My oldest son Josh, he's with the Cleveland Browns, also played with the Florida Marlins. And there were some pitchers that would warm up throwing the uh, football because it will strengthen the arm just throwing it. Now the first thing we want to talk about is good mechanics. Now the first thing we talk about with good mechanics is making sure that we're good and loose, that we're not tight. 
and this is real important. A lot of guys uh, here in Louisiana, they like to hunt, and on every rifle there is a sight. It's the first thing I teach our quarterbacks is that they sight with their left leg. And in, in other words, they're going to step with their left leg exactly where they want to throw. Uh, you can see Allen stepping through, very loose motion. A lot of young quarterbacks, when they throw, uh, go to throw, will do this. Watch my feet. They will, they will want to throw like throwing to Jake, but they'll step here and throw there. And that, that, is, uh, that is one of the problems you have with developing a strong arm. You can't step here and throw here. You have to step right at your target. So we'll watch them for just a, a throw or two and make sure that they're sighting in properly. Step right to your target with that left foot. There you go. Step right at them. Very good. Getting that ball away from your shoulder, a good loose motion, torquing those hips. Very good. Now let's go to the knee. We work with the knee uh, every day. We try to get 10 throws on each knee and then 10 on both knees uh, before uh, we even start throwing our routes. Good, hard, firm throw. You can firm it up a little bit. Point that left, le left foot right at him, Allen. Very good. Good, firm throw. There you go. Build that arm. Build a good, strong arm. And torque that body. Get that body torqued. There you go. Torque that body. By torquing that body, I'm telling them to get their, get their shoulders torqued in here because that's where you're going to get a lot of your arm strength. A lot of quarterbacks, a lot of quarterbacks will simply will throw like this. It's all very mechanical. I don't, I don't want my quarterbacks to throw like this. I want them torquing, torquing and throw. That's where you're going to get those hips rotated is by torquing and throw here and here, here and here. That's where you're going to loosen up those, that upper body and those hips. Tor learn to torque it and throw. That's where you're going to get a lot of arm strength. Very good. Remember when you're warming up to throw that you want to be patient. A lot of young quarterbacks, they're going to throw a lot of ducks and they get impatient, they want to quit. I was probably, it took me at least a year. I, w I was a baseball player. I didn't know how to throw the ball at all when I first started, but I was an all-state quarterback by the time I graduated because I watched Terry and I watched Joe and I emulated and I didn't get impatient. And that's the important thing for you young quarterbacks. Stay with it. Throw a lot good mechanics. Sight with your left foot always. Notice the next time you try to throw at a distance. Do you do this? Do you drop back and you go like that and throw? Most young quarterbacks do. This is the wrong throw motion. You can't drop back and throw like this. You always sight properly and then learn to torque. Learn to get those hips around when you throw and learn to follow through. Uh, be patient and remember what Terry said. Throw a lot. Now, uh, most high school and college programs have terrific weight programs, so I'm not going to talk a lot about that. But one thing that I want to make sure all of our quarterbacks do are do the uh, wrist curls uh, both ways because this is going to strengthen that wrist and that forearm. Uh, and I want you to see one of our quarterbacks do that. It does take a lot of weight. Just get high reps and work on that uh, wrist and forearm. Let's watch Allen. All the way down slow, bring it back up, pop it up. Slow, bring it back up, pop it up. Okay, one more time. Pop it, now go the other way with it. Just reverse, do the reverse, and just try to work your wrist. Just trying to work your wrist some. Just working your wrist, just strengthening your wrist and arm. Very good, very good. Now, we we'll want to stand up, Alan, and just the, uh, just the reverse curl up here. Just reverse like like this, I want it like with your arm. I want to come down just like a throw, okay? We're going to work on the tricep. Now, there's so many things that you can do now and so many trainers that are doing so much more than this, but uh, I learned from Terry and Joe watching them. This is what we used to do all the time uh, on top of all the other stuff that we used to work out. Make sure you get a good, strong base. Really work on your legs. Build you a good set of legs and work on this with that, that arm strength. I promise you, it'll make a difference.
As you can tell, quarterbacking's hard work. Remember, quarterback, start with your feet. Make sure your drops are, are deep enough and quick enough. Make sure that you ha you're agile, you make quick movements, you throw on commands. Get, you can get a little brother, you can get somebody uh, at the, d down the street, a dad, somebody to work with you to give you some commands as you drop. Throw them to the right or to the left. You can see with, your, with the arm strength, you can build it just by throwing a lot. Good mechanics, working on those knees. You've got to work hard at this game. Uh, I've had some of the best in America, and each one of them worked uh, harder than anybody else on the field. And I'm telling you what, you work hard, you've got a chance to be a championship quarterback. Quarterbacks and coaches, remember to make this game fun. It's a game. It's something to be enjoyed. I see too many, far too many coaches and quarterbacks struggling with all of this, and they're making it something that it's not. It still has to remain a game. And if it's played right, if it's practiced right, if you enjoy these kids that you get a chance to work with, if you enjoy your trade, you'll find out why football is the greatest game on earth.